Hey, it's been a while, not quite as long as last time. This week, we're gonna be taking a look at why 2024 is the perfect time for you to buy your first 3D printer. Whether you're looking to start a small business, you're a student, you're an artist looking to bring your 3D designs into the real world, or whether you're a crafter and you're using something like a 3D printer to augment another piece of your tools, woodworking, or just general household repairs. 3D printing is the perfect technology to have on hand to augment every aspect of your life. The first reason that I think that 2024 is the perfect time for you to buy your first 3D printer is that in the last two years, 3D printing manufacturers have really leveled up their game. I mean, look at my Bamboo A1 sitting here. It's fully polished. There's no DIY components to it. It looks like it was designed to be a finished product sitting in your home. With things like the polished details, the no printed parts, and the seamless integration from idea to final product, the machines are better than they've ever been. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional user, something like the A1 Mini is something that would find its way into your workshop or your workflow without any issues whatsoever. A machine like this one doesn't have a huge footprint. So even if you're just doing around the home repairs and want something that doesn't look like a mess of threaded rods and wires, then maybe consider grabbing a small compact machine like this. For most of our needs, a machine with a volume of 180 millimeters cubed is perfectly fine. Like the print that I'm knocking out right now is not even utilizing all the print volume. And I'm sure that you can hardly hear this machine running, if at all. The silence from the upgrades that manufacturers have been making is one of the big pain points that we had in years past. There are still some little robot noises as the thing moves around, but this printer is moving faster out of the box than machines did five, six years ago and they made a heck of a lot more noise. So if you're concerned at all about having something that's either going to invade your space or pollute your room with noise, these new generation 3D printers like the P1P and P1S with the silent active noise canceling firmware update or the A1 series, or from what I've heard, the new Creality K1 machines, they are quiet, which means you can have this running in the background on a bookshelf and go ahead and print off that new for your stove or your washer, an anti-sag bracket for your GPU if you're a gamer. This thing is perfect. It doesn't take up a lot of volume, it doesn't make a lot of volume, and it is stupid simple to operate. Whether you're a student, a maker, a DIYer, or a professional running a business with 3D printers as the backbone or at least a contributing factor to your process, there's no denying that the cost of 3D printing has come down exponentially over the last five to six years years. Even in just the last couple of years, we've seen this absolutely insane rise when you compare machine quality versus the price. No longer are you spending $300 on a machine that makes barely passable prints that you then have to spend dozens of hours of tinkering and tuning and calibrating to then put hundreds of dollars worth of extra hardware onto it and say, it prints just as good as a Prusa because we're at the point now where things come out of the box printing every bit as good as the Mark III or better. And that's why 2024 just makes the timing even better. You can go to Micro Center right now and you can buy a Creality K1 Max, which is a 300 millimeter cubed Core XY, fully enclosed speed demon of a 3D printer for $699. No, that's not the normal price of that machine, but it is going on sale super regularly for that price. So I'm pretty confident in saying you can pick one up for that money. Being said, you have to have a micro center near you to grab that machine for that price, but that is the same exact price as a 256 millimeter cubed bamboo P1S. My A1 Mini, which is sitting right beside me, only costs $299 for the bare machine itself that you see right here. That same $300 a few years ago wouldn't have gotten you nearly this far. That would have gotten you an Ender 3 Pro maybe and some upgrades. But when it comes out of the box printing fast, quiet and reliably, you don't have to worry about putting all of those upgrades onto the machine. So when the price of the machine has come down and the quality has gone up so much, it's pretty safe to say that the reliability goes up too, which also goes a long way for reducing your operating cost. 
you can pretty confidently hit print and go to bed with many of these new generation machines and feel confident that you're gonna wake up in the morning and you're going to have a bed of finished parts instead of a mess and half a spool of filament wasted. So instead of throwing $10 away that you could have used, you're just gonna have finished parts. So when the cost has come down so much, if you've ever been on the fence about 3D printing, I would say now is absolutely the perfect time to jump in and go ahead and grab a machine. The resources are better, the community is more knowledgeable, the machines are more reliable, they're faster. If you're the kind of person who is looking to bring a 3D design that you have in your head to life, I would say some of the newer style machines, you might be able to bring that design to life in four to five hours and make sure that that's exactly what you wanna be. If you're a woodworker and you need to print some corner clamps, instead of having to take the time to make a trip to Lowe's and stop working on something else, you can just use your machine that you already own to 3D print them. Yes, it's probably going to be a little bit slower than driving to the store, but chances are you're working on something to where you can maybe shift focus and work on another part of your project while you wait for your jigs or fixtures to print. Not only is 3D printing saving you money because the machines are now cheaper, but it's also going to help save you time and give you convenience, which to me, it's really hard to put a price tag on convenience. What I'm spending in money up front to get a tool capable of making me many things over the course of ownership is greatly going to offset the cost of having to buy these specialty pieces of hardware, waiting for an Amazon delivery, and frankly, it keeps me from having to leave the house, which if you're in the middle of a project, you know how frustrating it is to have to go to Lowe's 87 times because you bought the wrong fittings. People from all walks of life have been embracing 3D printing, whether it's creatives or people looking to make practical things. I personally find that to be a really cool thing. Growing up, I was somebody who kind of had a hard time feeling like I fit in or belonged somewhere. When I was talking with people around me, they never really seemed to care about all the nerdy things that I was going on about. Whether it was electronics, video games, you know, all of the things that made a nerdy kid a nerdy kid in the early 2000s. However, since I got involved with 3D printing, I have found like-minded makers and nerds, people who want to geek out about the machines. And there are some really fantastic communities online. There are Facebook groups, Discord servers, Twitch streams, YouTube channels, subreddits, forums, Essentially, the list goes on. Basically, if there is a place on the internet where people are talking about a topic, you can best believe there's going to be a group of individuals talking about 3D printing. There are generalized groups about 3D printing as a whole, specific groups about machines, specific groups about other hobbies like 3D printing for home aquariums or 3D printing for laser engravers, Dungeons and Dragons. Basically, if you have another hobby, you can take 3D printing and just cram them together and I guarantee you there is a Facebook group for that. If there's not, you should probably start one because I'm sure there'll be people who are interested in what you're interested in. And that's the beauty part about the internet. It's bringing people together at a rate we've never seen before. I would say as an overall general statement, these groups are intended to be a place where you can gather and chat and nerd it up about 3D printing. Whether you wanna share your most recent make, you're really proud of something that you designed, or you're having repeated print failures on your budget machine from six years ago, there's likely somebody who's going to be there that's gonna give you some words of encouragement or maybe help you troubleshoot the issue. Personally, I find a lot of value in these different types of groups. And if you don't wanna be a part of the overall larger online 3D printing community, that's okay too. A lot of folks are just using these machines as tools in their workspaces, and chances are they don't have time to geek out and nerd out about them online. If you want to enjoy your adventures and melted plastic on your own, go right ahead. It's not a requirement, but it's nice to know that it's there and you can talk with people who share similar interests and potentially a similar mindset as you. My last main reason that I think 2024 is the perfect time for you to buy your first 3D printer is the simplification of the overall process. 3D printing is more accessible than it's ever been in its entirety. What I mean by that is interacting with these machines is super simple. I know that you've heard me say before that I do not care if a machine has a touch screen or not, and I stand by that statement. A 3D printer having a touch screen is of zero consequence to me. It's not something that I'm ever going to give points or take points away from a machine for in a review. For most folks now, I think that a touchscreen is probably going to be the most logical point of 
user interface because you can just poke the thing that you want to do. So actually interacting with the machines physically is simpler than it's ever been. And when you look at something like my A1 or Anchor Make M5, the original that has the screen, the UI on them is very simple. It's very easy to actually interact with the machine. When it comes to preparing a file to 3D print, you can't really just go online and find a 3D print of a PlayStation controller and say, machine, make this yet. You have to search on a model repository, a website like printables.com, a place where people have uploaded the files for you to grab, or you have to design your own. Once you have that file, you have to import it into a program called a slicer. Interacting with that program before it used to be difficult. The user interfaces in the slicers that we have now are much more simple. When I'm preparing a print for one of my bamboo machines, I'm not changing any of the settings. I'm just going to import my model and push slice, and then I'm going to push print. A lot more of these machines are coming equipped with Wi-Fi out of the box, and you can just press print. You don't have to fiddle with a little SD card, or pray that you don't get a Windows update in the middle of a three-day print. We're past that now. The machines are networked. The slicers are simple, and at least in the case of a program like Bamboo Studio, you can actually operate several machines. And when I said a moment ago that you can't just go and say, printer, print PlayStation controller, and said we're getting close, that's because Anchor and Bamboo Lab both have mobile apps that you can use. With the Bamboo Studio and Bamboo Handy app, you can actually find a model and just press if you were curious about what we were printing through the duration of this video, go ahead and check out my shorts for that. I genuinely believe that everybody is going to end up with a 3D printer in their home at some point. I do believe that they're becoming an appliance, very similar to a microwave. When the microwave first came out, it was kind of a niche thing, and all of your neighbors and relatives wanted to come over and see just how quickly you could make a baked potato. And I think that 3D printing is no exception. The machines have become significantly smaller in footprint while maintaining comparable build plates, and they don't have necessarily the DIY aesthetic anymore. They're much more accessible, they're easier to use, they're less expensive, and within the next 10 to 15 years, it's my prediction that every household is going to have one. So instead of waiting, why not start learning now? It's definitely not going anywhere. There are over 8 million consumer 3D printers in circulation, and that number only increases every single day. If you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to give us a like. And if you've seen a couple of videos of ours and you want to help support what we're doing, be sure to give the channel a subscribe so that way you don't miss any of our upcoming projects and videos. And if you know somebody who's on the fence about buying their first 3D printer, go ahead and share it with them and convince them that 2024 is the perfect time to buy that first 3D printer. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk and hanging out for a little while while I ramble on about 3D printers. If you're still on the fence, even after this very convincing argument, Pull the trigger.